Hello everyone, this is Victor Dantas here from the Zero to Hero Academy. Uh, over the years, we have helped multiple professionals uh, either get into the power platform market or some of the seasoned professionals within the industry up their game within the low code technologies. And we are here to announce that we have a special program coming up between March 19th and May 30th. This is the Power Pages and AI Zero to Hero Mentorship Program. Join us, click on the link, access the lessons, you know how we do it, live lessons on Teams, and then the recorder goes up to YouTube and you can follow if you are in different time zones, but you pref we prefer it to join it live. Connect, ask questions, so go ahead, invite your colleagues, your dad, your mom, your grandpa, let's everybody join the fun, all right? We'll see you then, take care. Right, Oliver Rodriguez. This is lesson ten of the Power Pages and AI mentorship. We have folks here in the Teams channel. Some other folks joining us from the uh, other social media channels: Instagram, LinkedIn, so on and so forth. Uh, and I'll try to manage the two sides here. <laughs> pass questions along to you, and we'll see how this works. But welcome. Thank you, my friend, for doing this for the community. We really appreciate it. All right, take it away. Thank you, thank you, Victor. Uh, and yeah, look, thank you for the opportunity and, and the chance to speak here. Uh, had a great time on Tuesday. You know, it was a very, very nice uh, session there. So hopefully uh, people will enjoy uh, this one here. This will be a little bit different than Tuesday. So. On Tuesday, I really focused uh, on jQuery, JavaScript jQuery for Power Pages uh, and using GitHub Copilot to help us. Uh, I'm going to be a little bit less AI, less Copilot today. I'm going to talk uh, about like what what really uh, I think you should know about um, uh, all you need to know about multi, uh, multi step forms in Power Pages. Uh, as I was preparing for this demo, I, I realized that in one hour, realistically speaking, I, I can't tell everything you need to know about mode step forms because there's so much. Uh, but I'm gonna give my best, and I and I selected a few topics here that that I struggled with when I when I was learning about Power Pages um, a few years ago. So maybe you you are having the same struggles. So I'm I'm gonna share a few uh, tips and tricks here and see, see if I can help you with your implementation. Um, okay, so the things I wanna cover is, uh, I'm gonna start showing the how I lay out my Dataverse components. Uh, just briefly there, I'm assuming everybody here is familiar with uh, designing the forms and all of that, but I'm just gonna give a few, um, a, a, a few examples there on how I do that. Um, then I'm gonna talk about uh, Power Pages forms. And as I talk through the Power, Power Pages uh, forms, more specifically the mode step form, uh, I'll talk about a few challenges, right? And I selected here about three challenges that I struggled uh, again a few years ago. So ho hopefully uh, this will give clarity to some people. Uh, first item that I picked is when, when we have the page validators uh, undefined. So basically the page validators is something we use uh, to apply validation on a form, either that is a step form or a mode step form or a, or a basic form. It's the same, same principle. Uh, and sometimes that object is is undefined. So I'm going to show you uh, why and, and and how to fix that. Um, to, I'm going to talk about conditional branches. So just a few tricks there as well. And some, sometimes people, it, it, it is not very user friendly the, the way to apply that. So I'm going to show uh, the way the way I do. Um, and finally, I'm going to talk about session issues. So I think it's it's very common that, that there's a famous flag there about. Uh, start session on load, uh, and some people get confused with that, and then it's it's very difficult to get the behavior right. So I'm going to talk about a few scenarios here, uh, and hopefully that will help you as well. Um, all right, so let me jump here to my environment. And first thing I wanted to show is the Dataverse side of things. So I'll, I'm, I'm going to my solution here, and note that Everything I'm going to show you here uh, in terms of this, this components, the Dataverse elements, we could as well do from the portal uh, design studio. 
but I personally uh, probably uh, maybe I'm a bit old school, but I personally prefer to go separate, you know, in my solution isolated um, and make this customizations here. So what I have here is is a very simple application uh, form where uh, the users will will upload uh, product details. That's just a, a fictitious scenario. It's not exactly a, a customer requirement or anything. So two things I wanted to show here. So one of them is the views. And this view here that I was showing uh, here on Power Pages, my application's fairly simple. Um, I do have it as a separate view to my other Dataverse views or model-driven app views, okay? Uh, I'm calling it, uh, I'm giving it a prefix, uh, OR for my initials, and I'm calling my application's portal view. And the reason I do this is, is really to, to separate whatever is a portal component versus what is a model-driven app component. Um, and there are a few benefits here. So if tomorrow, if we're doing maintenance, or let's say uh, there, there, there's a, the customer is requesting an additional field but to, to, to a view, to a list, However, that additional field should only appear in the portal or the opposite. It should only appear in the backend model-driven apps. So if you have the same component shared between the two, uh, you're going to have to split that anyway, right? Um, and the other reason here is uh, from, from if someone is doing maintenance here to a view and they look at this view, they're going to know straight away that this view is for the portal. So if they want to make a change to a, a portal view, they're going to make change here. If they want to make a change to a backend view, they're going to use something else, a, a different view. So that's just a quick um, a quick tip here, and, a, and a, it's a practice that we use uh, in, in all our projects. The same for the forms. So you see that I have the information, which I use that for the backend, and then I have uh, an OR application portal form that this form will be uh, be used in the portal. You don't have to do the same. Uh, it's just it's just something that I do, and I think it helps me a lot in in my project implementations. Okay, so I open my form, and um, and again here I was just gonna quickly show how I lay out my form. So especially when I'm talking about uh, multi-step forms, I like to keep one tab representing each step of my form. So I have a terms and conditions tab, I have um, an application type, and I have a, then a, just a, a simple conditional here with a text field, um, just so I show you guys the conditional uh, step. Then I have a subgrid, uh, let me get rid of this here, uh, a subgrid for uh, product details, have application documents and summary, and then in the, in the summary tab, I actually show uh, all the fields so basically, I have a section representing each uh, each tab each, or each step. However, the summary itself is is a step. So the summary would show uh, everything basically. And the top one here is uh, it's a, it's a quick view form for the contact details. So basically, once I'm designing my my mode step form in the portal, I want I want one of the steps to be the contact record. So. Uh, and that's actually something that people always ask in the forums. So can I, in the same mode step form, can I flip between tables? You can, so th th that's absolutely no problem. And, and I'm gonna show uh, here how, how you can do that. All right, so this is my, um, my form. And let me jump here to, to Power Pages and I'm gonna click on Edit and John, I'm not sure if you have a question. I think you were raising your hand there. Yeah, I was just uh, surprised to hear that you could change entities. I was trying to react. Nice <laughs> yeah, to so that's that's a quite a, a common requirement. So uh, I'm going to show here, and hopefully that 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 will help you there. Um, all right, so I, I, I'm moving here to my uh, <clears throat> sorry to my studio design, um, and I'm going to create a new page. I'm gonna call this. Uh, I like to give the the my initial, so I'm gonna call application uh, is form studio page. I'm uh, I'm just separating here between studio because I already have uh, another one, so just don't want to mix them up. So I'm gonna create here a new multi form step. Uh, again, I have one, but I'll, I'll create one here new just just as example. 
and I'm gonna call our mode step form uh, studio. I can create my step from here, and within my step, I can, um, I'm gonna call it step one, just for simplicity. And in my table, I'm gonna select my application and I can select a form. And now here is where um, the mode step form functionality in, in, in the design studio, it starts being a bit, a bit limited, right? Um, so he, here we don't have the option to select one step uh, per tab, pointing to a tab. It points to the entire uh, form, and it you you can see that it's showing uh, pretty much all my tabs here, which is not what I want. And even if I if I preview, um, there's even a second issue that 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 it will show me here. Um, because I have multiple times the same field, it, it only shows once. Uh, and it's completely not the form that I want. So this is a limitation within the studio design. Uh, there are a few other limitations. We cannot add metadata. We cannot add conditions uh, and a few other things. So most of my, my demo here will happen actually in the Power Pages management, which is the model driven app behind Power Pages that we use to configure Power Pages as well. Th they are literally changing the same data behind the scenes, so it's it's the same thing. Uh, however, there's more options within within this interface here, uh, the Power Pages management. It's less user-friendly, however, th there are more options. And then just to show um, one example here, I have a, a separate uh, form here that I, that I already d designed previously, and uh, where I have all the steps. And you can see here now that there are, once I already have the, the steps defined, there are a few nice options, you know, that, that I can do. So I can quickly flip, um, move step forward or backward, which if you are doing that manually, uh, it is actually quite, quite quite a lot of work and you can easily forget something. Um, so perhaps what, one idea here is design everything from the, from the model driven app. And then if you need to maintain, you can use either one or the other, whichever you're more comfortable. But there are definitely, uh, the, the, there are limitations here in the in the studio for now. Hopefully, you know, in, in a year's time or even less, uh, there will be more capabilities here. So, all right, I'm gonna close this here for now. Um, and I'm going to work here in the back end. Okay, so in my mode step form, uh, and I'm gonna open the the studio one, which is which is the one that I just created. Uh, I'm gonna select authentication required. Yes, these these are yes by default. Uh, and later on, I'm gonna talk about this this flag here in more details. I'll just save those. And uh, we for for a mode step form when we are designing from scratch, we always have a start step to define which. We already created uh, the step 01. The name of my step, I would normally put uh, like OR mode step form studio. Sometimes I put a number, sometimes I don't put a number uh, and, and as well the, the, the function of it. So the, the first one would be uh, T's and C's, but um, but depends really the, the project. So some projects we we decide to only use the title or only use the number. It really depends. Um, another option here that I wanted to show is here in form definition. So so this is where the configuration of the form is, and this is already one limitation from the from the studio. So we cannot select a tab there. Uh, but I want to select a tab, so I'm gonna click select here uh, terms and conditions. Uh, this is, I can leave blank, and I want to associate with my portal user. And I already have a lookup to the contact record uh, called applicant. Okay, so if I, uh, if I just clear cache, and well, I, I have here a list, I'm just gonna point my, my create button. Uh, let me just do this now. So we can just test it better. So in my list here, I should have a new uh, page. 
So if I click create, select a web page, I have the application form studio page. And I'm going to select the same page for the edit. So I'm going to click here on edit. I'm going to do exactly the same. Um, don't worry about the JavaScript. I have a return here, and, and we, we're going to come back to it at a later stage. Um, OK, so clear cache. And once I refresh this page, I should see a Create button. OK, so the Create button should bring me now to only one step, because that's all, all we, we have defined so far. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna jump back here to my form step. I'm happy with what I have here. Now I need to create the the other steps. So just gonna open on a new tab here, uh, or I can just do directly. That doesn't matter. So uh, I'm gonna say step zero two. My step zero two will point also to the application. Now by default, it's it defines the next step as being the previous steps, which, which is where we came from, which makes zero sense. So this one here, it's now, it, instead of being an issue with the design studio, it's an issue with the, the classic interface. So you have to always be mindful of that. So I got rid of that. I'm going to uh, say that the mode is edit. Select my form, and uh, this time it's going to be the application type. Because I have added, we, we need to provide the source. Uh, and in this case here, because we just created the record, I'm going to say that the source is a result from a previous step. And this will be um, the step 01, which is the responsible, the step responsible for creating the record. I don't need to associate with the current portal user because uh, this, this, this is only for the insert and we already, uh, created the record. So I'm going to quickly create this step um, 03. So this time I want to point to my contact. So this is where I'm going to flip between tables. So I was pointing to the application, and now I'm going to point to the contact table. It's going to be an edit. And I have here a separate form for the contact. Uh, contact details. This time, the source uh, it's going to be uh, the current portal user, so we don't even need to specify the the ID. Um, so that's that's a very easy option that we have, and that's good. I'm going to create this step um, four. I'm just going to put here that is this is the condition. So here. Within type of my my step definition, I have a condition type. That's what I'm going to select. Uh, this points to the application. Again, next step here, I need to clean. And we're going to review the next step for all of them uh, after I finish here defining the steps. Um, and here I have the condition. Now, the condition that I want is um, it's going to be based on the application type. So I'm going to select uh, all the application type ID um, equals. So I have two types of application types. I should have kept the, the GUID handy, but I can go here. So if I go on tables um, and come to my application type, I have, uh, let me just uh, open here on a new tab. want the name and I want the GUID. So I have two application types. One is called conditional registration. The other one is called product registration. So if this is um, a conditional registration, I want um, I want it to follow one certain path. So what we have here is uh, we have we have two uh, links here or two lookups to the next step, let's say. One is if it fails, so we're going to have a step here. And the next step here is if it succeeds. So I'm going to create the step zero step 
zero five. I'm gonna call it step zero five A. This guy here and application again. Form definition edit. So I want the conditional step because that's in case we succeed. Again, here results from the previous step, and this should be step 01. And if it fails, uh, I want step 05, step 05B, which will point to product details. Same here. I'm probably going to review all of them now just in case I have, because I'm sure I have forgotten a few things. So I just clicked on the mode step form basically to start my view here from scratch. And I'm going to make sure that every step here has, has a nice flow. Uh, so I'm going to click on start step. And the next step here is empty, which I know it should be 0, 02. Going to save. I click on step zero two, and now I know it should be step zero three. And just to make sure we have this set up here correctly, uh, now step zero three, I should go step zero four. This is the contact. So we have here current portal user. That looks good. Here in the condition, we need um step 05a in this scenario and step uh no, this should be step 05b now the step 05b is the product details so i want that after the the conditional step it brings me to step um basically it emerges the branch back to step 05b and Again, it really depends here if if sometimes if you have numbers, it, it's easier to follow. Sometimes if you have uh, the title of the step, it makes it easier to follow. So it, it really depends on, on the scenario. Uh, so just to finish here, I'm going to add one more step. Um, step 06 to represent the summary. Edit, and this will be my summary. So all the same here that I had. Just make sure this step zero five is pointing to step zero six. All right, all right. So just going to clear the cache and refresh my page. OK, I think I have pretty much all of them that I wanted. So I have the T's and C's, and then I, I, I didn't specify the name for the other ones. Uh, and one thing that uh, as well that is interesting here is that um, by default, it will always retrieve the name that you have here. However, if I specify, for example, uh, let me just check which one is this one is this one is product details. So we have here in form options the progress indicator title. So I can put here uh, I'm going to call 05B step 05B product details. So once I do this, it will actually reflect there. So so you may have and and what I normally would have is I would have the, the the title here, the name as something more technical, you know, with my prefix, my project prefix, and then I set the title. Uh, the same thing for the page. I set the title so uh, it won't show uh, the ugly name or the technical name. So I have here now uh, step 5B product details. Um, OK, terms and conditions. Uh, all right. so. We have here the application type, which is uh, a lookup. 
Uh, now, one thing I forgot to mention here, but uh, I had already set up table permissions uh, just to to make 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 my life here easier in the demo. But uh, that's something that you also need to set up in the either in Portal Studio or the management app. But you need to have the permissions. Um, Okay, so one thing here that I always like to do is this is a table, the application type, but representing this as a lookup, um, it's not always the best user experience. I think it's nice if you have a large set of records and you really need to um, search and add filter and or, or or sorting and all of that. However, for two records, you know, even for a list of ten records. I don't think it it, it it makes a lot of sense or it, it helps the user to to keep that as a lookup. So I always like to to apply a metadata. So I'm going to the step level. Uh, this is the application type. So I'm going to relate it and create a metadata. And again, this is another thing that you cannot do via Portal Studio. Uh, but the idea of the metadata is that you apply a certain customization or you change the behavior of, of an attribute of that step. So I'm going to select application type. There are a few types here, subgrid and so on. I'm going to select this. And control style, I'm going to click render lookup as drop down. I could as well change the label. Um, so please select select the application type just as an option. And once I clear cache and refresh my page. So this is now rendered as a drop down. Much, much easier, much simpler um, user experience here. Um, okay, so remember that we, we defined that one step here that will be the condition. Oh, oh, sorry, I think that's actually step four. So I'm going to select here a uh, conditional. Step three should bring me actually to my contact. So if I update here, uh, IT consultant, this will update against the contact record and not against the application. And once I go to the next step, it's, uh, oops, got an error here. Um, so on application type ID, unable to recognize. So there's something wrong with my condition. Uh, let me check here. I didn't expect this. Apologies. Let's see what I did wrong. So I application type ID equals a GUID. Um, I don't see what's wrong actually. Uh, probably gonna need um, to go back here to my session. Um, as there's a typo here. Oh, um. Don't know here what I did wrong, but this should have worked just fine. I'm gonna try once again, um, just to be sure. And um, this time I'm gonna select the product registration. And if this doesn't work, I have the uh, I have another um, form there that we can use. So step three. Uh, yeah, not sure, not sure what what happened there, but um, I won't I won't worry about this. Uh, let me just go to my list. I'm just gonna change my page to this page here. Uh, okay, so let me try now. So this form here, I had just changed a few uh, other things. So I, this time here, I have a documents. Uh, I changed the the title for all all of the items here. And let's let's see if this is gonna work now. So conditional registration. 
Uh, I have contact details, bro. Wrong, wrong name here. And let me see if this is good. My God. Uh, I'll just quickly change the order of my my steps here. I'll, I'll get rid of the. I feel like the issue is the contact step um, that is causing issues with the condition. So I'll just remove the contact if it lets me. I'll move from two instead of three is going to four condition. Uh, let me see here. Just check if I did in the right. Uh, yeah, so I actually moved back to my my previous step. Okay, now now it brought me to my my condition step. I feel I feel like there's something funny when I'm changing the the the, the table. There is probably trying to pick back from the contact. Uh, I'll I'll try to play around with that and see uh, and see what was going on there. Uh, all right, so you see here that I have the conditional step, and once I uh, jump forward, I have the product details. So let me just jump back here. If I change to product registration, it skips the conditional step and brings me back to the product details. Uh, a few things here I wanted to cover around um, conditions. Uh, first of all, and th th this one is probably more applicable if you have the progress bar, right? If you don't have the progress bar, don't worry about what I'm saying here. But if you have the progress bar, you need to keep in mind that the, the portal will always assume the happy path, okay? So what I'm, what I'm trying to say here is my condition happy path is to go to the 5A. So before I get to the 5A, it's always going to display the 5A. Right, so th this scenario here, I have only about five steps, so it's not a problem. But if I have uh, a large branch, you know, one branch showing uh, certain details that doesn't make sense for a different branch, it will assume the happy path and it's going to show here the, the title of those steps, which you might want, or maybe it's something that you actually don't want. So a few things here, uh, to change this behavior is uh, you can also change the, the type of the progress bar. So for example, if I go to my step and I change my, my type of the progress indicator to a progress bar, so I refresh this. And now I have basically a percentage. So if a user ends up skipping a group of steps, it's not as noticeable as if they had um, several steps there saying the title of the step. So that's just a way to, to set a different behavior here so the user doesn't expect that they will go to one specific step and in the end they aren't going because of the condition. Um, the other trick, I'll just go back here to title. Um, the other trick here that I um, do sometimes, let me go back to my condition, is basically do the opposite of my, my condition. Instead of saying application type equals this, I say application type is not this one here and revert the, the steps. So the next step, it, if it fails, is actually the 5A and this one here is the 5b so i'm just reverting really things uh, it's it's just another way one thing as well that people uh, always ask uh, on a forum is in terms of a, a case switch so for example if the application is one do this if the application is b do that if the application is c do that we cannot achieve that in one single step okay uh, basically when we're setting up a condition, one condition is one form step. So you would need one condition. So if it if it succeeds, go here. If it doesn't succeed, the step 
5B. Uh, this one here is loading a, a form. However, it could be another condition. So you could say uh, if, if application type equals A, and then within the 5B, it would be if application type equals C, and then you'd have a, a happy path and the, the, the non-happy path, you could do another condition. So that's how we would implement a, a case switch, but there is no nothing in one single um, step here. Okay, so I wanted to talk about that one. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about was about the, the session management. And just to help with the session management, uh, I'm actually gonna keep this page open. Um, and I'm going to my applications and I might have to change this guy back here because I was playing here in the pages. So I'll just change this back, point into the studio page. Same for the create. Okay, so for now in my in my in my form mode step form definition, I have the start new session on load equals yes, which means every time I start a new application, it's a new session, right? So if I click here on create, it's not persisting the session and it's starting a, a new a new application from scratch. So I can select condition. So this is the application 38. And I can here come here, application 38. That that's fine. Uh, I'll just go back here. So you see that we, we have here the condition step. I, I just put a text here and we are in the 5A. Um, however, in my list, I have here the, the create, which we just did, and we have the edit. And in my case, the edit, I'm pointing to the same page. Okay, so we by default, every list, um, let me just open here the list in a new tab. So by default, every list is passing the, the ID of the record. So when I say the ID is the GUID, the primary key of this application to, to this page. However, if I click here on edit uh, and I'm selecting the 38, 38, if I click on edit, it's actually bringing me to step 01. And even if I if, if I start here the application, you see that we are on uh, on 39, which um, sorry, I think I, I think I selected 38 and, and it's bringing me to the 39, which doesn't make much sense, right? But the, the reason for that is because Every time I go to that page, every time I open the form, it's starting a new session. So that's the reason. And depending on, on, on your business scenario, it might make sense. You know that that might be exactly what you what you want. You don't want users to, to go back to that application. You want to force them to submit always. Uh, but depending on your scenario, it doesn't make a lot of sense. So I'll just flip this to, to no. Just to show you guys the, the the next behavior, right? So clear the cache again, and I'm going to open another tab, which uh, gonna get crazy here with so many tabs open. Um, all right, so if I click on create, it's actually bringing me to the uh, application number thirty nine that I was already on step two. Okay, so basically it's persisting the session that I was last time and considering that as active. So I, I can't create a new application from, from start. And even if I go, for example, on the 38 and click on edit, this is also bringing me to the 39. So it's ignoring the 38 and it's assuming I always go to the, to the last application, which Again, it might make sense to a certain business scenario, but you know, it, it really depends on, on, on what you're trying to achieve. Um, and one thing that is very common uh, in my scenarios is, uh, so for example, users can create multiple applications uh, and they can have multiple applications in draft, which means 
um, for example, I'll, I'm going to give an example. Let's say I'm creating applications on behalf uh, of another person, on behalf of a student or, or whatever. So I might not have all the information to submit uh, in one go. So I might need to start an application, uh, you know, maybe try to get documents offline or something. That, uh, in the meantime, I have another application that I need to get going. And I need to have a way to also come back to where I stop of that application and continue it. Uh, and out of the box, uh, there isn't such a functionality. The, 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 there is a way to achieve this, but it's 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 not as, uh, just just a few clicks. And I'm gonna show you uh, a way that I that I use to to achieve that. So let me just uh, I'll try to just get rid of some applications here because I think I have probably too many. Um, it's probably gonna get myself confused, but uh, let's see here. Uh, it's probably fine for now. I'm going to create a new application. Um, not sure here what happened. Oh, cleared cache. And I'll make sure the, oh, sorry, this should be yes. In the meantime, I'll be deleting more here. Clear the cache. Okay, so I have I have a, a cleaner uh, state here. Okay, click on create, um, and I have here uh, application forty on step two. So I'm gonna open a new tab and start a new application. I'm going to this is forty one, uh, and oh, I should probably select conditional and I'm going to say 0041. Just go back here just so it saves the data. Okay, so I have the application 41 on 5A and application uh, 02, sorry, application 40 on step two. One tricky thing here um, that, uh, not sure if this is well documented, but it's the URL. Okay, so if I copy and paste the URL, just going to open uh, this guy here so I can just remove the, the initial here. Uh, but you see here that we have two parameters. We have a step ID and we have a session ID. And the session ID is really the guy that I'm looking for. Uh, the step ID, it's it's actually not very relevant. So if I even delete the step ID, uh, this is used in the back end, but it's not really important here. So let me get rid of it. And you see here that it still works fine. I'm still on the application 40. It's still on the right step. The, the application is correct. There's no issues. So that's more of a, an internal control for Microsoft. We don't need to worry about that one. However, this session ID is interesting. So if I copy this one and I'm going to, I can get rid of this. I'm going to replace the session ID here. So you see here that I was in the 41 step. 05 and now I'm in the step 02 application 40. So the session ID really controls um, which application you are. And this ID it comes from uh, a table called multi-form step uh multi mode step form sessions. Uh, now I have a bunch here that's probably a bit uh some rubbish data, but basically what this session um uh, has is some some information about my step and where I am and also my step history. So if I keep going back and forth and conditions and so on, this is gonna track a JSON with uh, all, all all my basically all my history. Uh, you don't need to worry about the step, but basically what is interesting here is that and you can see here that I am in the uh, step five A for this one. Uh, which I believe is was the other application here. Uh, was probably yeah, it's the forty one application. So let me just go back here. So you see here that we have my my internal ID for the application, and if I'm gonna use the level up here, I hope you're familiar with this uh, browser extension. If I look here at the record ID, which means the mode step form uh, 
session ID. Uh, starts here BB1. Uh, now, if I look here in my browser, I have here the exactly step. Okay, so one trick here that I find, uh, and now this is this is where the my session from Tuesday starts joining here with with today is. Um, is I, I like to populate that session against my application. So one thing I do, uh, and I already created the field itself. So let me jump here to application views. And I'm going to add this field here called form session ID. Which is just a, a text field. It's not a GUID or any. It's going to be a GUID stored there, but technically it's just a text uh, field. So oh, clear the cache. By default, that's that's uh, empty. Uh, and I'm going to show you here one trick to populate that field. Okay. Um, there is one way. I'm not fully sure if that's supported or not. I need, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get confirmation from Microsoft, but there is one way that is via a Dataverse plugin. So uh, basically, you, you you trigger a plugin on the session creation, and and as within the session we have details of which entity, what is the record, you can you can basically uh, update that against the application record. The way I'm going to show here is slightly different, but also also takes the same effect, uh, which is I'm going to inject JavaScript um, to this page. And I already have the field here. So this field will normally be hidden, but I'm going to keep it here just, just to simpli for simplicity. Um, and I'm going to get the value from my URL and populate here. And for this, we're going to use our friend GitHub Copilot. So let me just delete this. I have the prompt here to save some time. So create a jQuery code that will retrieve the parameter called session ID from the URL and set the value in a form field called Oli form session ID. Okay, so let me see here if this um, well, this function I would probably keep it outside, but it it would probably work either way. Uh, okay, but it all looks good to me. So let me throw this code into my step uh, load. So uh, where am I? So this should be in the step two. I'm coming here to custom JavaScript. Uh, let me refresh this page. And it actually worked just fine. So in the all load of the step, it populated, uh, it copied over this session ID into this field here, which would normally be hidden uh, via JavaScript again, but I'm keeping it there just, just to see it. Uh, the, the one thing here about using JavaScript, th this method that I did, uh, this value would only be saved after I click next. The, the, the alternatives here would, you, you either use the Dataverse plugin um, if it's supported or um, an API basically. So you retrieve this value and update the application um, with the value, so that's that's the other option. But uh, th this would probably work for most scenarios. So if I jump back here to my application, um, uh, I was using for the I had opened the the number forty. So I have now here a form session ID, and uh, again, so for now this edit here is the out of the box. So if I click on it, it's going to bring me to a new application, which is not what we want. Gonna go back. What we want is to replace this form session ID. And now I go back to my session on Tuesday, and that's the exact job JavaScript that we that we played around. So I just added a return here so it wouldn't uh, execute. But I'm gonna remove the return. And the other slight difference is that this ID was set up as session ID.
So now once I refresh, it's going to uh, it's going to hide that button and, and and replace for the value here. So uh, it's probably not working for the number forty one because uh, it's it's undefined. You can see there in the URL. However, this one should work just fine. And there you go. We are in the exact last step. I can even go back here to make sure this is the application forty, which is which is just fine. So that's a, that's a very uh, important one that I wanted to show. And I think there's one final final element here that I that I was gonna uh, show you, which is about the uh, the validators undefined, which is the the page validators undefined. So I'm gonna try to go very quickly here on this one. Uh, so I'm gonna jump to my step uh, of the product details, which is probably this one. And I want to add a metadata for the subgrid. There's plenty here that we can do in the metadata. So if you're not familiar with this, it's it's really, really a, a big one. So I'm going to set up uh, delete as well. And I already have a form here for the insert. OK, so I have here the create option now for my product details. So one common requirement here that I have as well is that you know you have one step with only a subgrid, and that subgrid needs to have at least one record, or sometimes it's, you know, it has to have three records, something like that. Uh, so I, I often have this type of validation. However, you can't make a subgrid mandatory, right? There's no option on the metadata or, or, or anywhere, so you can always just go to the next step, uh, even leaving that blank. And that's that's a common requirement that I have. So I'm going to try to uh, quickly, I don't think I have the prompt handy here, but let me see if I can do this on the go. So I'm going to tell Copilot here, um, I have a um, subgrid on a HTML page called this is the name of my subgrid. And I normally use the these two classes as well. Also represented by two classes. So this and this. Can you add a page validator? Object using jQuery. Um, so that the subgrid has at least one record. Now I haven't tested this particular prompt, uh, so let's see. Let's see what happens here. Okay, uh, didn't quite like because it didn't use the it didn't use the 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 page validators as I wanted. Um, I might have to uh, let me see here if I can. Uh, can you add a page valid? Try here again uh, a validation for my subgrid using page validators object from dot net. Um, using jQuery only. Uh, didn't the, it didn't use the, the exact logic that I wanted. Um, but on Tuesday, I talked about how to add a validation, uh, on the portal in general, and even if you if you just look at uh, the JavaScript validation from the portal, it talks about the the, the page validators. Um, so anyway, my, my idea here uh, was not necessarily to show that validation; was more to show this object itself. So basically, when we and if you look at here at the documentation, th there is this first first line here which says 
if page validators is undefined, return. So you will not be able to add the validators if you have um, if you have this undefined. However, if I take a quick look here in my in my subgrid page, subgrid step, and I check the the page validators, you see that page validators is not defined. So even if I added my function here to check the subgrid count, uh, it's going to come as as undefined. Um, if I just go to the previous page just to show the same um, object, and I click here, page validators, you see that we actually have something, right? So the reason why this happens is because I have no field here specific to my main record type, which is the application. So the, the quickest, and, and I've seen sometimes people trying to create a whole new uh, page validators object, which is probably something very difficult to do. But a quick, quick way to achieve this is just if I go back to my form, and I promise I'm very, this is the last thing here that I'm going to do, guys. If I just go here to my product details um, and I click and I just select a field, you know, which which this field could be uh, hidden via JavaScript uh, in the form. OK, clear the cache and I'm going to refresh this product details page. OK, so we have here the name field now. And if I just check again the page validators, you see that, that I do have the object here. So if I was trying to add a new a new page validators, um, it would let me this time. Uh, I'll try to get the code proper, properly working here. I'm sure I have an example somewhere. Uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll post on my blog or something. Um, so that was me, guys. Uh, thank you very much. I know, I know we are uh, very close there to the hour, but uh, yeah, no, thanks. Thanks again to Victor to, to set this up. We have Ulrika next week. Uh, I think she's going to talk about uh, styling the portal, which is a great topic, and she's very, very talented on that. So uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks again, Victor, for organizing this and everyone.